What's up, Wando? I'm Alex Bavosa. And I'm Christian Crowe. And welcome to this week's episode of Tribe Talk. This week on the show, we have Wynwood Farms, Funding of the Arts, and What to See in the A43. Wynwood Farms is an orphanage located in Allendorf for boys who have had a troubled and unfortunate past. The orphanage serves as a place where they can grow and develop and become great young men. Finn Carlin has the story. Over the past few decades, the Wynwood Farms home has offered a safe haven for young boys with a traumatic past. The home offers independence, protection, education, and care for those who haven't quite seen it. The boys' home was founded in 1985 by a man named Jody Tamsberg. We provide behavioral, therapeutic, and uh, educational interventions for boys who have been negatively affected by some type of past trauma. The people out there at Wynwood really just have the boys' best interest at heart and trying to do everything to help them to make their lives that have gone really down in the dumps at times and making them feel better, make them feel special, and helping them and trying to help with the families too because they do try to get the families back together again. A lot of the day is spent not only with education, but it's character building, it's frustration tolerance, it's anger management. The neat thing about our school is they do much more individualized education because a lot of our kids, they could be 12 and not know how to read or write. We also spoke with two young boys who are residents of Windwood. For their personal safety, we have been asked to conceal their identities. I changed a lot because first when I got here, um, well, I was good when I got here, just, uh, they helped me because before I was going to go here, I was, like, acting up and acting a fool. My teachers at the schoolhouse, like Mr. Wise, Ms. Garrett, and Ms. Pendrick, that they helped me out the years, especially Ms. Garrett, because she worked in the PRTF for three years, and she experienced what we mostly, what we went through, so she, underst she understands my pain and stuff. This has been Finn Carlin reporting for Tribe Talk. The topic of hate speech versus free speech has been an ongoing debate. The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. However, what crosses the line between expressing one's opinion and being offensive towards others? I think the purpose of the First Amendment was to give people the ability to speak their opinions and really indirectly preserve the freedom of thought, because if you can't speak your thoughts, then why have thoughts? I think that hate speech is often protected by free speech when you're talking in a broad, general sense. But when you're targeting a certain individual, or if it can be construed as a threat, which I think it often could, then that would not be protected by the First Amendment. We have a very unique history with hate speech in this country. At first, it started out being anything that was opposed to the government. So hate speech started out when you were advocating for socialism or advocating for communism. It was treason. It was hate. Now it's... it's evolved to speech targeted towards particular groups of people. The Westboro Baptist Church, a prime example of the hate speech versus free speech debate, is a group that holds provocative protests. They often protest American soldiers. Both sides agree that the group acted within their legal limits when protesting during the funerals of soldiers. Um, so the Westboro Baptist Church event was definitely wrong, but it was justified because they're on public property and they had every right to say what they wanted to say. I think the Westboro Baptist Church is often well within their legal First Amendment rights when they're doing things, mostly because they are led by a lawyer. However, I think that the that harassment laws could be expanded so that the specifically the protests when they do it at a funeral, I think that that can fall under harassment and wouldn't be covered by free speech. So in many cases, the court has relied on other laws to regulate hate speech. The majority of the time when they decide a case on hate speech, they are deciding to protect that particular speech. I think that free speech is obviously an important component of society in general, and you can't just strip away 
people's rights because you disagree with them. But on the other hand, there there's reasons for people to obviously be offended by that. This has been Salome Stork reporting for Tribe Talk. The town of Mount Pleasant has a lot of local businesses that offer a wide variety of different products. This nail salon offers a new non-toxic and eco-friendly option to beauty products. Salome Stork shows us what this new nail salon is all about. Milk Bar is a nail salon known for its fume and carcinogen-free environment by using high-end and non-toxic products. Milk Bar also has a nail art menu, allowing any design to be done on your nails to reflect your unique style. With a spa experience at a salon price, Milk Bar is definitely a place to check out in Charleston. This has been Salome Stork, reporting for Tribe Talk. and grew from Despicable Me had a child, it would be cast. <laughs> hashtag Baldy, hashtag legend, hashtag cue ball, hashtag we love you, hashtag K. <laughs> Icon. Miss Davidson, the first time I saw you, I thought you were a freshman. That's not a surprise. Hughes, it's only a matter of time before that restraining order comes in. Kasten used to hunt ghosts, but he'll never get that scare back. And by the way things are looking, he ain't never gonna get that hair back. <laughs> Wando Band and other art programs are consistently ranked number one in state and even nationally. But since Wando is a public school, our arts programs are not funded the same as other magnet schools throughout the state. Here at Wando, students pursue their talents in visual and musical art. However, there has been much debate regarding whether or not these programs have been adequately funded. Wando teachers give us their opinions on the subject. Of any school um, in Charleston County and in the state, like we are probably one of the most well off in our in the fine arts um, as far as the support that we get from the administration and from the school district. Uh, as the district goes, we get the lion's share of the arts budgeting. Uh, that's such a small amount, it doesn't really make up for what we need, but it is at least more than some of the other groups may get. Dr. Ebelsheimer has a pot of money um, that she can use for you know, that, that she divides up among every teacher in every department in the whole school. So that is her instructional budget. It is the school's instructional budget. We're very supported here. Um, very lucky. I've heard horror stories where teachers only get that $250 at the beginning of the year and they have to supply their whole budget from that $250. We feel very fortunate here at Wanda to be supported as well as we are. There are other schools in the district that get more funding than us because they are magnet schools. So they get money that is designated just for arts programs because they are arts magnets. 
we don't get that even though our arts programs are much larger and there are many more students who are impacted by our arts programs and that our arts programs are open to anybody they are not just open to select students but we don't get that special funding from the district but at least we do get funding from the school so I'm appreciative of that um, how can that improve I think um, it goes all the way back to looking at how much money the district is able to receive from the county and the state you know unfortunately right now in our country education is completely underfunded so they have to look at what services have to be there which ones need to be there which ones can be there I think it goes back a long way to our government then that goes to the state then that goes to the district I do believe the district is actually trying really hard to figure out ways that they can fund those most necessary items for us this has been Davina Patel reporting for Tribe Talk. So to get the ball rolling, my first question would just be, what sort of got you into the education system? Like, what drove you to become a principal? I was in business for a while while I was in, um, in college and finishing up, and then I had majored in English, and I thought I was going into law. That was the whole reason behind that. And then the whole time I'm in undergrad, I'm thinking, mm, you know, maybe I should have gone into education. But I was ready to get finished with college, so I got a straight English degree. And I worked for several years in business, and then I decided I had that yearning to go into education. So I went back to um, school and got my education degree so that I could teach English. Well, that's wonderful. A lot of students in that transition between Miss Beckham and now you, yourself mm -hmm. have found it sort of difficult to sort of put a name to the face of our right. principal now. What challenges have you seen through that and sort of how have you come about dealing with it? So this year I have made it a goal to get out. I'm in the hallways in the mornings if I can get out of this office and nothing's waiting on me when I get here. And then I go to at least one lunch during the day and I try to get in at least four classrooms every week. I want the students to know me. I want the students to know that I'm approachable and I want them to see my face and I really want them to know who I am. Alrighty, well I think that's exactly what we're accomplishing here. Mm -hmm. So how often do you deal with students on a one-on-one -on -one basis? I talk to kids every day and I talk to students who, I like. I can get an email from a student. I got an email from a student that said, I really need to see you today, is that possible? When I get an email like that from a student, I don't know whether the student's in danger. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna get right on that. So yes, I speak to students. And one thing that we have to remember, and I think everybody at Wando does, is we put kids first. No matter what's important to me or that I need to get done that day, the most important thing are the students and what's best for them. Awesome. Thank you for mm -hmm. that as well. Sort of last but not least, is there anything that you'd like to say to the students that sort of give them a little slice of who you are? Well, I'm, I'm your principal, and I'm the one that cares, and when the day is done, the buck stops here. And um, I really want the students to know who I am and know that I am approachable and to, I, want to, I want to see my students. Okay, well thank you very much. I think that we can definitely accomplish that with this. Okay, doke. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Connor Griffin, and welcome to this very special edition of Wando Sports Talk. But before we begin, I would just like to say that this will be my last episode hosting the Sports Talk segment, this moment right here, because I decided to step down from my position and hand it off to Ellie Grace Gilman and Kellen Noonan. They will do a phenomenal job. They've got a great team behind them with Pete Jonas, Paige Charling, Anna Sawyer, and Jack Carson. They will all continue to do a phenomenal job. But as for me, this is the right move. While it's been great talking sports with you the past year and great bringing you the news in general for the past two years, this is what's best for me for a number of reasons. I just can't thank you enough for the support that you guys have given me. I now officially pass the torch on to Ellie Grace and Kellen. And for the last time, this has been Connor Griffin. Go Warriors. Wando. Here, excellence is standard. For us, sports are more than just a hobby. They are our passion and our purpose. We are driven by the success of those before us. Because here, championships are expected, and winning is in our blood. We are Wando. And we...
are warriors. What's up, Wando, and welcome to a new era of sports talk. I'm Kelly Noonan. And I'm Ellie Grace Goodwin. We've dedicated the first episode of the new semester to showing how sports affect the Mount Pleasant community. Starting at a young age, kids train through the rec department and through travel teams to prepare for high school sports. Here's our take on their journey. The wrestling team has started their season off 6-3 and three under the leadership of Scott Rogers, Matt Eisner, and Dylan Kraft. Keep it up, guys. And lastly, the girls and boys basketball teams have started their seasons. Here's an inside look on their games against Somerville High School, followed by the scores of their games against Fort Dorchester. This has been Ellie Grace Goodwin and Callan Noonan reporting for Sports Talk. Thanks for watching, Wando. Be sure to follow us on Snapchat and Instagram at Tribe Talk WHS. And try to send in your teacher mean tweets to our Twitter at WHS Tribe Talk. This has been Christian Crone and Alex Mavosa signing off. Taking pictures of people is kind of a way of channeling my emotions. It, I like to see how people feel and put them behind the camera and see how they interact with it and how they can like change them, their whole demeanor. And it just, I don't know, I feel like putting someone behind the camera, you can really see who they are. <laughs> it makes me become a better person and I just, I don't know, I feel more comfortable with the camera with me. I become more of myself than anything, so. I've definitely seen a growth in my Instagram within the past probably six months, just especially from students here at Wando because that's my main point of view is the girls here. I feel like everyone deserves to love themselves in their own way and I feel like my portraits make them love themselves more. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
Stop. <laughs>